Hi there, my name is Josie Young and I'm Digital Media Assistant here at Scottish Youth Theatre and this is the Encounters Rehearsal Vlog. Encounters is a tour of solo performance work made across previous Scottish Youth Theatre projects that are now touring to the north and northeast of Scotland. These performances are accompanied by a series of free participatory workshops that bring together young audiences and artists creating space for performances, theatre and creative conversations. The four locations that the team are visiting are Orkney, Caithness, Aberdeen and Murray. The four artists that are touring their work are Joe Hunter, Lily Carmen Smith, Beth and Murray and Aman Akhtar. The works that they've each created first began in previous artist development programmes, Phone Calls to the World in 2021 and Trajectories in 2022. In this vlog, I joined the artists during rehearsal week, right before the tour sets up north. It had been months since most of the artists had first performed their pieces. So I had the pleasure of catching up with all of them and chatting about what it was like to revisit their pieces after all this time. First on my schedule was Joe Hunter, who was rehearsing at Surge. Joe's spoken word piece was first performed as part of Phone Call to the World in November 2021, when COP26 was first held in Glasgow. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? The piece is called Words on World's Ending. It's a piece of spoken words gig theatre um, about being a young person that wants to make a difference but feels like they're completely powerless in the world that they've kind of been left behind and it's specifically about um, being a, a queer young person like myself in that scenario. It is quite, a, it's obviously a very political piece and it's obviously a piece that is kind of targeted towards young young people and kind of a, a a call to arms almost and encouraging people to get into activism and the arts or both. People from older generations were also very receptive to it and um, also felt very moved and inspired by it and some people came up to me saying that like this encouraged me to do better or to encourage um, the young people in my life to uh, do more uh, with that kind of scene. Um, which was really wonderful because uh, when you do work like this you do kind of worry that older people are going to feel like you're shouting at them. <laughs> um, so that was really nice that they could see that it was um, a call to arms for everyone, not just for young people as well. It's been really exciting um, to see how the piece kind of moves with time because it definitely is a time piece. It was obviously written for COP26 um, and addressed that. So that had to be adapted and kind of, it had to kind of shift with every place it's performed in, which is also interesting when you're taking it on tour. It has been a sobering thing to kind of realize how things politically have gotten quite a bit worse and um, has gotten a lot more challenging for young people, so we were talking about a lot of instances of police abusing their power and um, transphobia in the UK and now updating it for a more current time, it's um, sad to see that you can just replace those examples with newer examples. I, I feel a lot more sure of myself and have like come a long way in terms of my journey with like gender identity, self-acceptance and all of that. So. Coming back to the piece, I feel a lot more sure of myself and a lot more forthright with things and le less afraid to discuss them. I feel more in control of the piece than I did the first time that we performed it because I was still coming to terms with these things myself. I'm really looking forward to just meeting everyone that is involved with the project. This feels like the, the first time that we're able to get it in front of young people that wouldn't usually be able to see something like this, just reach more people than before. Um, but I've also never been to any of the places that we're going. It'd be grand to just kind of, you know, get around the map a little bit as well. After having some lunch and fighting with some fairly temperamental Wi-Fi, I headed up the stairs. Lily Carmen Smith was rehearsing her piece and I got to chat to her. My piece is called The Body Zone. It was originally more of a sort of installation piece and the performance was kind of like a smaller part in the middle. The original idea was to create like a museum of my life, um, mostly through buildings that I'd passed through in my life and the memories that were associated with them. So I created like 14 different exhibits in a circle 
that had um they were created out of like old toys and junk that I'd found in my house um, and represented different like public buildings and spaces and then I wrote texts that were like memories associated to these places and they were on audio guides and then the audience kind of walked around and listened to the the memories associated with the exhibits and the performance was the last final exhibit of the museum I framed it as like an exhibit that hadn't been finished being built so the audience were invited to this grand opening of the final exhibit and the final exhibit was re related to the first memory that I can really feel like strong emotions associated to and it was when I visited the Millennium Dome in 2000 so I was only three but I remember this having a lot of hype around it and you saw it on the TV but it wasn't really clear what exactly it was mm -hmm. and as I was only three years old I was watching a lot of Barbie films at the time I was obsessed with this one video which was about Barbie building a stage in outer space so I kind of in my mind I related these two things this um, Millennium Dome which was a big kind of new labour project of Tony Blair and Barbie's Interstar stage. And in my head, I'd confused them. Going to the dome, um, specifically in, in an exhibit which was called The Body Zone, which is where the, the new name comes from. You travel through the human body inside it. And um, it was really exciting at first, but it actually became really, really scary. And I started to sort of realize my own body at the same time. In my practice, I, I really like to relate different things. So like my own memories, sort of more universal memories. So like the Millennium Dome, um, which is like anyone who was alive at that time kind of remembers because um, it was such a big thing. So I've always kind of wanted to create performances that relate like my memories and other memories, but bringing in elements of pop culture politics etc pretty much all of my work that i'm doing is kind of related to like public space or buildings like very location based and how memories and time and politics and emotions are related to like physical spaces mm -hmm. yeah i'm just so excited to go on tour i just think it like even just like telling people i'm going on tour it's um it's exciting because my piece is like very based in like politics of like late 90s, early 2000s. It's interesting for me to think about how that will work uh, with a younger audience. But I feel like it still, it still relates because it's about Britain in general and just like, yeah, the kind of country that we live in. I then had to sadly wait for the following day before I had a chance to chat to Beth and Bethan was rehearsing at the CCA where she had the entire space to herself. There she was rehearsing Similitude, which was first performed at Trajectories in 2022. So my piece is called Similitude, about walking from one side of your bedroom to the other. And so I tried lots of different kind of like, um, I guess, theories of like um, different like journeys and paths of how to get from one end to the other. And then what I wanted my piece to say um, and the kind of environment I wanted to create um, and how I wanted audience members to feel. That was a big thing I learned from trajectory. So it's like, what do you want to give the audience? What are you giving and what are they going to take away? I worked with kind of like mental health and theatre before trajectories and then that was kind of the perfect opportunity for me to expand on that and um, try some new things out which I did um, and it really helped me like find kind of what I wanted to say and like what path I wanted to take um, in theatre making so that really helped me solidify that. Every week was like a different kind of development of it um, and pulling in different things and trying things that maybe didn't work. I've never really sat down in one place. I used to, I studied musical theatre and then that was kind of all I really knew until I got trajectories and then I realised that there's a whole other world of things out there that you can do. Um, and that's given me the confidence to keep doing that outside of Scottish Youth Theatre and like in my own practice. It was kind of daunting at first to think about going back to that because that was quite a um, like pivotal time in my life when I was in trajectories and a lot was changing and going on around me but then kind of because we had a lot of resources from trajectories it was really easy to kind of get back into that creative mindset and get thinking about it again and what I wanted to do and like, to kind of progress it and carry it on. It's a kind of semi-autobiographical piece so 
um, I've had a look at taking a step back and creating more of a character for it. So there's a bit of more distance between like myself and the piece, even though I'm still giving like myself into it. Um, I think I'm really excited. I just enjoy traveling and I've never been to these places before. So that's very exciting. Um, seeing new places and exploring new things and the kind of landscape will inspire me to get more creative as well. Um, and yeah, I'm just very excited and also to bring it to um, new people in a kind of a new age range and like um, the collective. So that'll be nice to see how um, people react to it. They're from like different backgrounds, different ages and things like that. So I think that'll be really good for the piece and um, for me to just see how um, different places react to different things. So that'll be nice. And then for my final interview, I headed all the way back over to Surge where I got to catch up with a man. A man's stand up piece, What Do I Do Now, was first digitally released in trajectories, but now she was adapting the piece so it could perform live. So my piece is called What Do I Do Now. It's named that mostly because that's just how I'm feeling through life right now. The piece, especially at the time of when it was written last summer, was just about like so many things that were current to my life and what was going on with me. So it's funny that you say that about like artists changing and the world changing around us as well because when I looked at it again to bring it on this tour, I realized I was like, I don't think I'm the same person I was six months ago. Getting a 2023 update. Revisiting the piece, kind of leaving that gap actually, I think has been really helpful because when you are an artist and you're working on your own piece, it's so easy to just find it start finding it a little bit monotonous and mundane because you're the one who's had the eyes on it the entire time and it's not new material anymore a lot lots of people haven't seen it and they're they'll be seeing it for the first time with a fre like fresh eyes a fresh perspective um you know like when you're doing stage performances they're characters and essentially this is like a character of myself um but because there was a lot more personal content it would just was like kind of terrifying but I think that's the growth of an artist as well, that now I'm like ready to do it live and I'm excited about it, even though I'm still nervous about it. Excited. Yeah. I'm excited to like be in a space with other people. Um, and like live performance is so much different because the, like the feedback you get from an audience can really change the pace of a performance. Like you can perform to audiences for a whole week and every single audience will be different. And that makes the tone of your piece different as well. So now the transition now of like having something to actually feed off of and not faking the confidence as such is going to be so interesting to see. Um, I've never been to Orkney either and I'm so excited to like be taking the ferry to Orkney and just being that far north. Excited for like the road trip aspect. I'm like we're going to crank up the tunes, get a bit of karaoke going, a road trip playlist, get the snacks. I'm also excited as well. Um, like just to meet new people, different people and people that live like in these kind of rural areas because it would be so different to like Glasgow, Edinburgh, getting a like fresh take on like what they think as well of the piece and seeing what parts resonate or what parts are completely alien to them. Like I hope that they enjoy the piece um, and I hope that they do take some bits away or like some bits resonate um, or they just are discovering something totally new. And that's the end of the Encounters rehearsal vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you give this video a like, that you subscribe and you go visit Scottish Youth Theatre across all of our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, where you can absorb even more Encounters related content, including images and more vlog related content from the tour itself. See you next time.